Located here. This is New Eden. An anomaly even within the data break network. Ever since the dawn of aviation, mankind has looked to the skies with hopeful expectation of conquering the stars. Beyond the remnants of the shattered Lid gate, a universe of impossible splendor lies among an endless sea of stars. These are the sounds of the cosmos, the sounds that echo through every corner of the universe. This is New Eden FM. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to New Eden FM. Coming to you only nine hours late. I'm kidding. This is the U.S. time zone edition of New Eden FM. You asked and we delivered your music, your voice, and your weekly update on all the Eve shenanigans. Whether you're an indie guy living under a space rock or a Navy helmsman, we've got you covered. And uh, I am covered by these wonderful people. Fortunately, I'm never in the studio all by myself. Alondria of the Galaxy has saw fit to grace me with her presence on tonight. How are you tonight, baby girl? I'm doing good, and I, I've devoted a great deal of me to being here tonight, because this is our special N.A. edition with some very, very big news about things going on in the galaxy. <laughs> Mind-blowing! Absolutely the biggest news I've seen in a long time. I know it's absolutely chaotic right now. I mean, everything between alliances uh, disbanding to uh, one of the, the, it's the holy war of Eve, right? Apparently, it's the season, not the season of gift giving and togetherness and gratefulness. No, this is the gift of cannon fire and laser salvos and, you know, it's the it's the season of destruction. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's awesome. And and who better to tell us about the season of destruction? Then my good friend and uh, and colleague in the crime organization known as Self Destruction, then Fat Nick. Thanks for being with us tonight, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Anytime. Yep, yep. And uh, how's that um, how's that thing you're doing going for you right now? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Okay, okay. <laughs> And uh, I believe just joining us back in the studio, uh, I mean, it's been how long? Uh, at least a good three or four months, right? Since we last heard the uh, somber voice of Rumblin' Ross No Spy. He was one of the original hosts of the New Eden FM brand. And uh, I mean, well, after all this time, you're back on the show. So uh, welcome, Ross. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome today is brought to you by the letter W. There is no W in jump. Amen, brother. <laughs> Very excited to be here. Definitely thank you guys. It's been a, it's been quite a while. Uh, but I have uh, downgraded my audio setup and my Wi-Fi and my Eve participation in the last six months. But I'm glad to be back here, especially right now where things have just gotten at as much or more interesting in the game than they have been in two years. This is going to be an amazing <laughs> month. Like, Merry Christmas to all of us. Merry Christmas indeed. On today's episode, oh man, I don't know what to tell you. It's going to be a doozy. Uh, there's so much going on right now, just like Alondria explained a moment ago. Uh, and I'm not talking about this week's patch notes. Those are coming at you in just a few minutes on New Eden News. Right now, in the mix... This is your weekly update on all things Eve Echoes and Eve Online. New Eden News. Hello, 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 and welcome back for New Eden News. And you know what? The nice thing about uh, this New Eden News episode is that we really don't have that much stuff to discuss. Last week, uh, I believe on the, uh, the 30th of November, we did get a small patch. And uh, it was a, a pretty small patch. Uh, overall enhancements for combat special effects. 
And uh, there, in their words, in order to recreate the ever-changing battlefield environment, we have carried out a comprehensive optimization of special effects, hoping to meet the high expectations of capsuleers. I'm really glad for this one. Uh, this has been a change coming for years. Optimization of anything. I mean, I think I feel like they did a good job of reducing black screens. Remember when we used to black screen at K4, right? I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, being able to play the game and not black screen is um, is, is quite um, it is quite, you know, amazing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I pay a lot of money for this game. Sometimes some of us pay 50 bucks a month without even spinning the wheel. Now, I haven't gotten into any 1400 <coughs> on grid like K4 in a little while. But I've been hearing stories that black screens are much rarer. Have you guys experienced any? I haven't seen any in the last two, three months. And personally, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, there was a um what a, a 700 pilot battle that just took place like two days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Also, almost no black screens. Ooh, almost no Ooh. black screens. Wait, what does that mean? Well, almost I mean, no somebody black. Screens, black right? black I mean, it somebody, means somebody did black screen. I mean, someone's all somebody on black screen. <laughs> Someone somebody. probably with a potato phone. I mean, well, somebody's I mean, always playing Eve birthday. on their smart toaster. It happens because you know this is toilet <sighs> Eve, as that guy used to say from Eve Online. You're gonna play with what you got, but I'm so glad that they're actually putting effort into optimization. I mean, never black screen, not even once. Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, we are going to find out uh, how good those optimizations are because the server's on fire right now, and I'm not talking yeah. about the hardware. <laughs> but uh, to be able to need it. Yeah, to be more specific, uh, they, uh, they optimized the high slot modules, miners, strip miners, remote shield rechargers, armor repairers, lasers, cannons, rail guns, and a variety of missiles and capital weapons. Uh, I'm Ooh, looking forward to getting into my nag again. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into my nag again, and uh, just to hear mm. the really cool effects and stuff. Even if I got blown up after, it'll be cool, right? Uh, for the mid-slot modules, it's the stasis webifier, the warp disruptor, the warp scrambler, sensor dampener, tracking disruptor, target painter, uh, guidance disruptor, energy nosferatus, energy neutralizers, remote capacitor transmitters, command bursts, interdiction spheres, and warp disruption field generators. I gotta say that that's actually a pretty extensive list. That's pretty much every single type of mid slot module that you can imagine. I'm pretty sure that I also saw one of those. We did a test uh, right before the uh, the latest greatest war kicked off, and um, you know the effects were looking pretty good, at least for the uh, mm -hmm. for the armor. It was it was not bad. I will give them that. Didn't I? Didn't I hear a rumor? I haven't flown Lodgy in a couple of months, but I'm literally putting together as we're talking here because you know this is you know. Dicks out Harambe, I love my my love my Lodgy. Didn't I hear that you can now stack, stack. Lodgy reps? I don't think so. Like stack them up like a button. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I no, could probably no. log into a Lodgy and check it for you, but I'm pretty confident mm -hmm. you still can't do that. Um. Somebody, somebody <laughs> listening, somebody listening. Don't don't make us go do the legwork because we're lazy and we're doing very important <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> log in and show me your Lodgy. Yeah, I mean, if you guys can stack the buttons now, that would be amazing. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I uh, I mean, I don't fly Lodgy a whole lot these days. I started my career flying mm -hmm. Lodgy, of course. Um, but uh, that's the kind of thing. You started my career flying Lodgy. I mean, uh, I, I, just, I just don't see a reason why I would want to stack those modules. Uh, and it's really just because typically you want to have the modules separated because it makes it a little bit easier for you to... Um, you know, to, to kind of multitask yeah. kill. And with spread, armor... Spread your reps. Yes, and armor is a thing now. And uh, the way that mm -hmm. that is set up, you, you have to be able to... Um, you have to be able to... Um, to um, heal multiple targets at one time. Otherwise, the fleet won't work. Um, and so it's great for, uh, for Laji that have always complained that things are too boring for them. They want more of a challenge, etc. Well, armor is more of a challenge now. I mean, it's it's viable, for and sure. I think that that's great. But I also think that now you have a reason why, okay, I kind of have to pay attention because, I mean, at least two targets are going to be taking damage no matter what. And so... For sure. Uh, for sure. I, I think but, it, but it, it, makes, kind of, it makes a good I mean, dynamic. Basically, saying Lodgy is boring. They haven't flown in one of your fleets. 
because you make us work for our SRP. I mean, work. Wait, like, how do I make I'm, you work I'm for your shaking. SRP? I mean, I don't you take that much damage. That, you make me shake that, Laji. Laji, Laji Anchor, you need to get 80 kilometers away over here. Laji, you need to push all your buttons all the time. I don't, I don't, you I don't do all work. that anymore. I, I don't do all that anymore. It's pretty much get on anchor, guys, and if someone falls out of, if they fall out of the the bubble or whatever, I just go, well, there's SRP, I guess, and then I move on. <laughs> well, dang. Well, don't tell anybody about this because next time I'm Lodgy FC, because I don't want to do just Radio Fleet FC. I just get too drunk when I do that. But next time I'm doing Lodgy FC, <laughs> I'm gonna snap that whip because this is how I learned it. All I'm right, gonna snap cool. it. It's get cha cha. Go for it. I mean, why not? You know, after it's amazing. After a while, you do FC work for so long that you become kind of jaded. And when people do stupid things, you just don't even blink anymore. At first, you're all like, guys, do this, do this, do this, do this. And after a while, you realize how fo how, how folly it is. I mean, that's just part of being an FC. But I guess that's something we can talk about a little bit later on in the broadcast, right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. We've got such a, a pact tonight. Tonight is so such a pack night. Holy moly. We got in the house tonight. Helandria of the Galaxy. Jeez, how the drunk did one. you have to get to the do number that? Two and number two. <laughs> oh, I got drunk Friday night. I got drunk Friday night. I okay. made Heaney say his own name. We'll get to that later. We also got in the house tonight back from a long time just playing solo. We got the fat Nick. Fat Nick, how are you? Holy, yeah, I'm I mean, doing great. I, I tell you, bro. But anyways, <laughs> so in addition to all those things, they also did uh, increase or improve the blocking effect for star luminosity, station decoration, station display icons, partial post-processing effects, ship trailing effects, and the skybox effects um and navigation lights for trade centers so i guess that that's a little bit in line with what's going on currently in eve online of course the uh, big uprising update hit in november um so uh i mean the going joke right now is uh, of course michael jd and uh his corporation red wave is over there and they are they're doing quite well for themselves how are they doing uh, they're, they're are doing they, are they pulling it off uh i mean they're they're doing really well in terms of making a pvp um organization or pvp corporation i mean i saw their last um i saw the last uh a kill board as far as their corporation and stuff was concerned um i think that they started off a little bit in the negatives because all corporations start that way but i mean they had like 500 and something uh ships destroyed and like 600 and like 14 ships lost so they're what is almost that, like the first week i mean how long have they been playing this i mean i don't even do that in a year well this is the first um this is the first ish um they went back and they started playing again however i think mm -hmm. that uh they did they did play a little while before they came back to eve echoes to continue playing for a bit so i am gonna go ahead and say that i mean some of those kills they did get during the initial conception of their corporation and then you know they've just been kind of sort of building on that ever since which is fine uh, i think mm -hmm. it's great uh now whether they decided to uh to rename the uh the corporation to red wave or whether they basically left their old corporation uh which was hull warning and decided to make another corporation i do not know that um because at the moment I i'm not i'm over in eve online but i haven't really joined them i haven't really been playing enough to justify being in there i'm in there with pandemic horde they're they're significantly more um chill in terms of how active you have to be and everything which is great because if you're if you're playing eve online or if you're playing eve echoes believe me you don't really have the time to dedicate to doing all the eve online things that you want to so um so it's good to be in a more chill group but uh, upon retiring echoes then i might be a little bit more involved because that's a huge amount of time that gets freed up there uh either way he's doing you know they're, they're doing really well and he made a post on reddit which i thought was absolutely hilarious uh, i'm not going to read mm. the entire thing i might send uh send a link but um i think someone basically just made a meme about how he is um he's over there enjoying the on uh, the new content which has been brought in by eve online meanwhile uh no was basically just like steamrolling shh and uh, he made the statement that i'm not playing eo casualty we are working on building a good corporation with active pvp pilots we have been having a blast roaming through faction warfare and have had some great fights 
and uh, I'm not going to continue with everything else. I mean, if you want to read his uh, his comment, he is um, he is there yeah. in um, in the uh, the I believe it's posted there in the uh, Echoes Eve Discord server. And uh, I believe that he said that that was going to be his last post as far as all things are concerned, because, um, you know, I, I will admit I'm one of those people that kind of figured that he might be thinking about rejoining um for the sake of this war mm -hmm. like a lot of people came back for the sake of the newest latest oh, yeah. greatest war Pe war oh, brings yeah. people back to the game and well he said that he has no interest in 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 trying to um in coming back uh and it's not really the war and it's not really shh it's just how he feels about the development team and to be fair um i, I don't even I, I basically just commented saying i enjoyed reading that because the development yeah. team, even though they are doing better these days, they're doing better than they have in the past. They're putting in more effort. Uh, some would argue that, you know, it's kind of like, I, I don't want to say that it's too late because it's not really too late. There are still plenty of people in the game, still plenty of people doing things in the game. And I think that they can they can save it. But there are those people who, like Michael JD, believe that too little, too late. You know what I mean? Because they had all this time and opportunity to get in there and to, to make meaningful changes, but they were more interested in like lining their pockets than actually, you know, building the game to be what the players really want it to be. Um, and for so, sure, for sure. I mean, I mean, I mean, this is this has been the topic that has been the bane of netties. We we have been hoping it'll be the bane of netties that we talk about. Hey, they're not serving the players. We've been talking about this for two years now, and. I don't know. I don't know if they're ever going to get off their asses. I think I mean, the stuff that's happening this week, this month, is going to be the modus operandi of New Eden for its entire lifetime. And I hope it's a long time because I do enjoy Toilet Eve. But I think I think it's going to be up to us to make up for where the devs don't help us. Right? I, it's always been up to up, the players, though. It's, it's really always been up to the players to do the things that the devs either can't do or won't do. Um, you know, whenever there's there's really good content going on, I mean, it's always player gener generated content. But that's not really. I, I don't say that that is a terrible thing because that's always been the nature of how Eve is. It's always been player driven content. It was always the players that were pushing the ball forward as far as that's concerned. However, the things that the devs did fail in initially was good balance. I mean. It took them how long? About uh, you know two years um, before armor actually became kind of viable. So now we're we're ex we're experiencing this thing where we're trying to look at armor and go, we think we can make something out of armor. However, look at how long it took them. And at this point, everyone is very 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 much invested in their show mm -hmm. doctrines. I mean, the Nagalfar is the most popular um, PvP dread, and of course, yeah. um, the Minakawa is n now the most popular. Um, facts so it's it, it's one of those things where they're making the better choices and Sheep has said it a few times not only on his own show yeah but he's also come over here to New Eden FM and he said that they're making better decisions but they are making them very late in the game this is basically the fourth quarter and people are not yeah. going to put up with you know really bad gaming op optimization it just cannot happen and we don't really have enough to engage new players. So you get new players and they will maybe spend a little bit of time in the game. And then after that, they get bored and they leave and they go somewhere else. But it's because, I mean, they are hearing from anytime they join a legitimate NullSec organization. Cool, I want to take part in the CTA. What ship do I need? And it's pretty much all Tech 10 stuff. And I think that the tech level, like the tech system, is the absolute bane of this game. The tech system has been the thing Absolutely. that has been the absolute bane of Eve Echoes and the, the and it's it's the right. number one thing that keeps people from really playing the game together. We need to go put up a, uh, a one of those little surveys on game improvement stuff on the Eve Echo server and I'm just saying brigade the hell out of this guys. I mean Get people rid already of have the tech system. People it's already have system. been doing that. It's, it's they've been doing that for a really long time because you know you do it again? new players are coming in, and they've got to spend a good amount of money. If you want to actually be competitive, you have to spend quite a bit of money to um to yeah, be yeah. able to, to just, just, do what you're doing. Just yesterday, I had a guy that wanted to jump in a fleet. He jumped in with me. I was reading the leading the radio fleet. Sorry for anybody who was in that fleet. 
I had about 17 too many whiskeys, scotch whiskey. To oh, be precise, way too much fun. Oh, uh, it was too much fun. But this one guy asked me, he's like, can I bring my rattlesnake? And oh, I was shit. like, bring whatever you're okay with bringing, dude. And he said, it's my only ship. I just oh, bought this account coming from EVE Online. Oh, shoot. And, and then I asked the Boy. main FC, I was like, this guy's bringing his rattlesnake. Can we throw him a bill if he blows up to buy some real ships? Because this is not a real PvP ship. No, I'm sorry, but he doesn't know how to play the game. Send him an Omen Navy. I would do it, but I'm kind of broke. Yeah, how'd that work out with the uh, the FC that was in charge of that fleet? <laughs> oh, I will tell you that story later. That was so much fun. I made Oof. Tahini say his own name, and it was great. It was glory. You should have Okay, Fat Dick, it. you were there. Was that pretty funny? You should have recorded it. We'll tell that story it. later. It was very much fun. You should you should have recorded funny. it for all of us. Yes, Preserve definitely. it for all times, because I wasn't in that fleet. All right, all right. I'll tell you the guy's story right now if you want. Let me tell the story right now. Oh my goodness. Uh, no, I actually think okay. that we should do it during the state of the war because that's, okay. we'll that's do a state um, of the war. It was definitely a war report. Yeah, I, I would definitely do a state of the war, but um, I believe that that's pretty much uh, the conclusion of Eve uh, Echoes news. I do believe no that we have the Ask Me Anything campaign going on right now. That is happening between the second and the ninth. Right now, you can sign this little petition on Eve's official Discord where you can ask them various questions concerning uh well all your burning questions of uh, you know about the game uh now i have never really been a huge fan of the ask me anything type of questions uh and it's really because they always tend to there's always a player that's going to ask a question that i find is a waste of time <laughs> and they spend time answering that question and we're not really asking the hard questions like what are your plans for improving you know market are we going to get are we, are we looking at having real market data anytime soon? But this is an opportunity for you guys to, to uh, you know, to, to ask legitimate questions. And so that poll is open for another five days. You can find it on the official Eve Echoes Discord in the announcement channel. Please go over there and ask good questions. Don't don't ask silly questions like, can we change our implants in space? The answer is no. That that would be that'd be horrible. It's bad enough that you can't lose implants in this game. We don't need to uh we don't we don't need to add that know, additional right? Don't put devs into making this change. Please. They cost too much. It's not like Eve Online if you lose your implant, you just spend, you know, one month's worth of plex getting another. Uh, oh yeah. lordy. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, please ask pretty good questions. Don't don't do anything like uh, don't don't ask anything that just doesn't make sense. And of course, there are the uh, the high sec island. The people that live on the high sec islands, I know that they will ask many of these questions because, as far as they're concerned, uh, well, you know that's um it, it's it's a big deal, right? But um, you PVP oh, people sure. out there, which is the majority of you that are out there, uh, you know, listening to this show, please ask good questions. I am like literally begging you to um to ask good questions. But and I'm begging you guys, if you are high sec island players, please ask those questions too, because you are the ones that fund this game. True. Like you're out there making ISK, that's what Netties wants. They want us to make ISK because that makes this game turn around. You know, they don't want they don't want ISK being uh, what's Plex right now? Three point eight or something like that. It's it's ridiculously expensive to the point that you don't want to buy it with yeah. ISK. <laughs> they want well, us to make that, and it, lose it. Yeah, go ahead. It actually bought it actually bottomed out because everybody got their free Plex from that event. At one oh. point uh, this morning, it was actually 2.8. Dang, I should have so, I should have been it, online to buy it. Yeah, all. but but the price, yeah, the price <sighs> seems to have rebound. Uh, I haven't taken a look at it lately, but uh, yeah, it's just that that plex market. They did just like inflation. They they devalued the plex by handing out a bunch of free flex. Dang, I wailed <sighs> two months too early. Was that just recent? Um. Yeah, they just got it. They just issued it out today. And everybody got it in, in, in their mailbox and everything like that for the plex that they, uh, for the AUR, the refund plex that they got for that event. And right now it's at 3.1. Yeah. So it, it has rebounded some, but it, it is still depressed from what it was uh, yesterday. So <laughs> if you are looking for plex, now is your time to buy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for those of you guys that are currently 
of playing Eve online, if you happen to be over there, you are enjoying uh, some really, really, really amazing new content, uh, to be sure. Tactical so, Destroyer. So if you were like, <laughs> if you were a depressed EE Destroyer pilot and just like really, really sad, uh, you know, check out EO and, and fly an actual viable destroyer. No kidding. So in just a few moments, we will have the state of the war for you right now in the mix. This is PvP by Amaran. And the weekly update on all things Eve. This is your Eve Echo State of the War report. Alright guys, welcome to probably the segment that all of you have been tuned in for. This is the State of the War. My gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. You guys know what I'm saying. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. This is going to be the game changing month that this game has never seen. I was gonna say since Pantheon but no no no. That's just me with my own front up thumb up my ass. This is the game changing month this game has never seen. Mm-hmm. Pretty if much. You, I've got friends. I've got friends that have pulled the Eve needle out of their vein like a year ago. They're back now. <laughs> oh, because yeah. Because they're like, what? What? And well, it's not because <clears throat> nobody here hates Silent. It's just that we we all want to do this. Silent wants to do this. Fear wants to do this. Is anybody here that doesn't want to do this? Uh, to be honest with you, I would have to disagree, even though I don't necessarily hate Silent, there are a lot of people that do. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I have I to mean, politely disagree hate, with I you. Hate. I mean, I, I don't hate him I either. I, I don't hate him, you know? I, I, I really don't I hate him. Been to too long. I haven't been up there too long. I'm just glad I'm up there and I'm running into so many friends. I ran into, I ran into uh, Chucklebox and the whole crew while I was up, I just ran into him. And I was like, yo, fleet up. And he was like, get in our Discord. I have been all day in my humpback combat and everybody that I have known for so long that I haven't seen it forever would just stumble across me because I'm sitting in a pipe system just bopping passes because that's what humpbacks do, right? And every single one of them was like, get in Discord, get in Discord. What are you doing here by yourself? And I'm like, I'm already in Discord. I'm hanging out with somebody else. I'm like, oh, then let's fleet up. And yeah, that's, that's the game changer. Well, right? that's not really the game changer. The game changer right now is that all of the legitimate alliances uh, in New Eden have basically joined forces yeah. to fight the um, well. What what many would classify as being the menace of the galaxy and that is the silent federation the largest organization and one of the oldest organizations in eve as of right now because when you think about it there were two other organizations that were large enough to be able to actually say well we are comparable to the size of silent federation that was pantheon and genesis federation and now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm both of those organizations are well they're they're organizations that don't exist anymore and they don't they don't of the reason those organizations don't exist is in fact due to silent now when it comes down to it i mean i've been a part of both wars i i was there on grid uh, i fought in the pantheon war i led many of the fleets in the pantheon war that challenged silent and no um, and it was, you know, it was some good content and it sucked when the organization did in fact, uh, die, but at the same time, it, you know, I didn't hate, no, and I, I, you know, I was annoyed with silent, but I didn't necessarily hate them. At least I didn't really feel any sort of hatred towards them until we got into the Diplo room and we found out how much they wanted to try to shake down the individual, uh, alliances that comprised, uh, Pantheon at the other side, uh, you know, on the other side well, of the table. To be fair, to be fair, I've never been in a happy Diplo room. No. The but first Diplo room I was in, I was in with Banana, and that was my own coalition leader, and even that wasn't happy. God bless the guy. I mean... he introduced me to, if you're in a Diplo room, you're going to have a bad day, unless you're hot dog. He loves it. Well, uh, no, it's, it's not just that. Diplo. There's there's a difference between, you know, between like doing standard Diplo and just really wanting to be, a you know, uh, kind of a jerk. 
and really mm-hmm. just like you know shake your dick in people's face and yeah. back when uh when when those talks were going on i was leadership in happy bees and um some of the things that they asked uh happy bees for for example they wanted the unamended uh server of the um the pantheon server and they thought that we had the power to give them that but that didn't belong to happy bees um just because it was the executor corporation of pantheon it belonged to everyone that's an unreasonable request and so some of these requests that they were making were just you know they they were they were big dick moves you can call them whatever you want to and they made a habit of doing things like that they went back to uh to happy bees later on when they uh when the war between um shh and genfet was retired for a while uh and they attempted to uh go back because they said well we never concluded the war with happy bees while the people were rebuilding they did the same thing with tsc now when it comes down to it I personally at this point, you know, it's a game, right? I I don't I don't care. Uh if Silent wants to play this kind of game, then it it's within their right to play the game that way because you know, I mean, they have the guns to to do what they are doing. However, it you know, it was kind of sort of a matter of time before all the legitimate organizations that comprise the Eve Echoes um community just okay. rallied together and said, "Well, F it, we're tired of it. We're not going to take it anymore, you know? <laughs> not all of the organizations have, though. Well... Th- there are <laughs> some alliances that are not participating. Very true. Like uh, Knight, for example, who is uh, actually um, recovering from their little uh, scrimmage or their war, or whatever you want to call it, with Myth. They were involved in a war with, with Myth. Uh, I believe that Lexia was yeah. actually in the studio or in the, um, in the lounge not long ago. Uh, actually still is in the lounge so a shout out to her but um yeah myth and knight were involved in a uh, in a war of their own and that was a very interesting situation that was that was going on and yeah. so both those organizations aren't really taking part in that war um some of the fountain organizations are taking part but one party that i found is uh, conspicuously absent is in fact red c uh who typically does take a side in wars like this but i guess we'll see them a little bit later i'm not counting them out i think that they are um i think that they are um that that they're just kind of waiting a little bit uh, it was kind of interesting to see how some of these interest, uh, how some of these organizations did play it though. When um, when Noah and Bird, Rexy is actually Rexy is are they? actually aligned itself with Honk. Because uh, oh my uh, gosh, there was don't even get me started. Don't get me started with Honk. Put out, they put out a list of all the different organizations, both both the the oh ones gosh. that are in the crab uh, in the crabs. The silent, and then the, all the neutral organizations, and then uh, Hawks, you know, H O N X. The Hunk made me so laugh Red so C badly. Is actually listed under there, along with X, interestingly enough. Dude. So Red C and X are aligned with Hawk. Dude, I mean, but the thing is, look at how Hong did it, though. <laughs> <laughs> and they made me laugh so much. And those guys, they typically do. And, you know, they waited. They saw when the war declaration went out. And, like, 30 minutes after the war declaration went out, that little station, that cute little stationary, um, uh, note that, that you saw from, um, uh, from, from Mother Goose, uh, <laughs> comes up on Reddit. And, I mean, it was absolutely hilarious. He just flew away. <laughs> he flew away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was hilarious, I, though. I, it was great. It was, but I, I have heard that uh, they they were actually uh, going to sit there and kind of chill, but uh, somebody went and poked their citadel. So. Uh, Ooh, are you talking about Wyvern? Oh, are they back in? Are they back in? Um, yeah, are they back in the war now with SHH? Somebody apparently poked that. I don't know. That well, I mean, back the thing about it is, but I think they're going to go poke back. I have my imagination. Okay, that's fine. Well, I do know that they had, um, that uh, Honk had no, um, well, let's put it this way. The people that were involved had no intention of letting Honk uh, just kind of like flutter away un- unscathed. And it's really because yeah, no, no, no. Honk has... Honk doesn't get a pass. No, they don't. They, they, they're they basically the shock troopers of SHH. Uh, anytime I SHH wants to do something... They're all passed. 
I mean, anytime that SHH wants to start, you know, to go to war with an organization, Honk is always there to like soften them up a little bit, you know, just do some troll stuff and throw people off. And they're really good at it. You know what I mean? And um, that's a um, that is actually a compliment to Honk, to be completely honest. They're very good oh, yeah, at throwing yeah. people off their game. No middle finger is intended except middle finger honk. I'm coming for your station, YRMJ. Everybody's distracted by going up with going up north, but trust me when I say my bomber's going to sit on your station this entire war because I own That's this my station. station. I oh, this is your station. Well, I own it, and Worse. I haven't had. <laughs> there's there's been no rent paid in two years since it left Pantheon hands. So I'm here to collect with some missiles. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I'm, uh, Alondria, <laughs> what you just posted in the sound of us, is this an updated list of what we have currently involved in this uh, in this war? This demographic list? Yes. Uh, yes, Hot Dog actually provided this uh, to great. me. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's really great. And it's even I got updated uh, with uh, no uh, personnel uh, being uh, neutral because... Right now, they kind of are. Well, no, so. oh, we're going to get into that in Eve talk, but no doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> this, this is an interesting graphic because I this saw this. very interesting. Mm -hmm. I saw this graphic as part of a couple videos recently, and it was just mm -hmm. the thumbnail for a couple of YouTube videos. And I wasn't sure why it was just thrown on there, but never shown in the video because this is a thing. It might be real, it might not be. If it's by Honk, I'm always assuming. You know, honk bonks, and that's how it goes. But look at these numbers. Well, look at I, this. <clears throat> I appreciate. Um, I, I definitely appreciate um, a hot dog for providing us with this. And yeah, these numbers are absolutely pretty insane. So on the what you're seeing in the sound of us right now is on the um, on the far right uh, left side of this, you have the coalition or the crab coalition that is comprised as of right now of yet. Burr, TSC, Wife, uh, Wife, or yes, I'm sorry, not Y5, um, X, uh, or EXDS, uh, Beer, IS, Boop, MXD, RC, or RSCP, Fear, Void, Void, TCOS, OG, TM, AAA, SOS, AOA, NEEK, WG, Red H N O T O, and that comprises oh. a total of three hundred and twenty-four corporations. Red H is actually uh, not no. supposed to be on there. Hot Dog yeah. is going to actually okay. put out an update list tomorrow. Okay, so uh, they've got eight corporations. That, that's on there. They've got eight yeah. corporations. Yeah, yeah. So you you just subtract that, and it's still what uh, three hundred and uh, and and eight sixteen. Sixteen. Three hundred and sixteen. Yeah. From the, t uh, the <laughs> I mean, it's still 316, and when you take away the, what is it, I think it's, um, it's, what's ready, Four just 421 people, I mean, that's still w well over <laughs> uh, 23,000 clones. It's, it's, it's 420 yeah. plus hot dog, and, okay, so, y'all out there listening, and especially here in the studio, you know how much hot dog has been my rival, I mean, I have trash talked him to death over the years, and I will say, this guy does his numbers. Uh, I just posted in the sound of us uh, the link to the history of New Eden. We definitely want to encourage you to join that server, join your faction's uh, history page, and put it up there because the guy and his crew, I'm not sure who the main folks are, but Hot Dog is a big sponsor of this, to yeah, build course. our collective <clears throat> history with, with, com with complete lack of objectivity collectively throughout this. That means tell your story. Tell it however you want to tell it. Just tell it. And then well, the community yeah, will mean, put together a wiki of what the hell's been going on for two years. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, um, this, this project was spearheaded by Michael J.D. and passed off to Hot Dog yes. as Michael um, did uh, retire from the as game. It, but, I mean... As, as his inheritor. I yeah. think that the big story here is that you're looking at, uh, you know, roughly 23,000 clones. We're not talking about PVPers. We're not talking about, you know, um, people's alts. Where, you know, that's basically just collectively everything. And it's you're looking at it's a two to it's basically two to one odds, right? So um, mm. we're only taking uh, into account the organizations that are aligned with SHH right now, um, which is encompassing um, you know roughly what 
uh, 145 corporations, which is that is this the right. Is this the right time to talk about no bowing out and how this balances the numbers and yet there's no such thing as a balanced number versus well, SHH? Is me, this the time or you want to wait till later? I, I want to I put it this way because I think that here mm. is where true balance lies. People always look at these numbers and go, well, sh well, darn, this is like, this is, this is, you know, it, it should be a snowball, right? Well, you're looking at this yeah, as should be. you're you're looking at this, but you're taking out of account that how many of these people are actually hardcore PVPers, a fraction of them. How many of these people are willing to sit in the fleet for like six to eight hours, a fraction of them. You know what I mean? And I got to hand it to SHH. Yeah. And this is not, yeah. you know, SHH and I, we have gone back and forth, but they know for a fact that when it comes down to it, I've never thrown salt at them. They are very good at mobilizing their people and getting good performance out of them on grid. They've always been oh, yeah, pretty sure. good at doing that. And so, to be honest, I think that even though no bought out and i think that that's that's a, it's a big deal because when you look at what no brought to the table no brought raw pvpers who are willing to sit there into pvp for like six to eight hours burr is the yeah. only other organization uh you know with with some of the people in tsc whom i know for a fact they will they will do some scary things same with boop they hey, have some no really bear. amazing people but what i'm I no care bear. but oh, i haven't seen you on grid in forever <laughs> Oh, well, well, you only see me when I'm in your Lodgy fleet. When oh I'm not gosh. in your Lodgy fleet, I just don't log in. All right, fine. But recently, all right, all right. recently. All I'm saying is that when it comes down to these actually, when you look at the corporate or the alliances that are on this list, who are definite bona fide fighters who are going to fight to the death behind. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, the odds are not as out of uh, SHH's favor as people would look at this list and go, well, the odds are completely out of yeah. their favor. And from a number standpoint, yes, they are at a disadvantage. But from a raw military mindset and stuff, I think that they have a good chance with no bowing out. Because if anyone, I can just, uh, let, me, let me retract that statement. <laughs> anyone with a half a brain knows that pay to win is a huge threat. But those of us oh, with the whole thing meant. understand the magnitude of the threat that he poses during times of war, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, this is going to be nuts. There, there is no war that I've ever fought in, uh, excluding the wars where I've been part of an organization that fought against, uh, well, fought alongside him. I didn't, didn't actually play that much during those. But every time I've been in a war that's involved SHH, I've been on the other side. just happens to be... Except for the SHH first gen fed, where I didn't really play for those couple of months. I just, well, no, I care, Baird. I mind a lot. Well, we built some capitals. That's nice. I'll tell you, every time, every time I've come up against SHH, they have won, hands down. It doesn't yes. matter the numbers. This numbers, you look, you look at this, what does it mean? It means scary things. It make, means things that make your balls shrivel up, or, you know, or just one ball, if you only have one. Uh, it makes them shrivel up. You look at these numbers, and then you go, do you know SHH? Because I do. They've kicked my ass. What? How many times, McKenzie? How many times is, no, has SHH kicked my ass? Enough. Six? Seven? Enough. Seven years? <laughs> Enough. A hundred percent victory. That's the number that scares me. And they're going to do it again. And they're going to do it again. They're going to yeah. do it again. They're going to do it in the face of overwhelming odds. And I'm not saying that to warmonger and get more people involved i'm just saying this is going to be the best fight this game has ever seen I think it's whatever be side fantastic. if you want to be neutral but join come and fight come and fight anybody wake up get your bros tell them this game is on fire it will melt your phone if not your heart i will be honest and, and i really wish that i could have gotten someone uh, from shh to come in and to just say, say a few words and it's really not to you know to like to troll them but it's really because I realize that these guys are really fighting some pretty uh, outstanding odds. But I also know that, like, who is behind, you know, who, who's behind um, the lines. And that is pay to win. Um, and so pay to win is the, you know, even though we, we see we see Zen or we see Zen um, as the as the leader of SHH. And yes, he's the leader of the coalition. But 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 pay to win is like he's he's basically the owner he's the team owner and he has connections 
And uh, he has ways he can manipulate things in ways that other people don't understand. And that's the reason why I would not count SHH. Now, I'm a member of Burr. We are, of course, still engaged with SHH in this war. Uh, of course, no bowing out the way that they did. It left us in a situation where now we have to think about how we want to treat this, right? Because in our case, Burr was designed as a PVP alliance. We don't care if you burn all of our SAV, right? If we, you burn it all down, you burn it all down. It's fine, whatever. We, we, we're, we, we are PVP pilots, and the only reason why we had SAV in the first place was to build our war machines. Everyone who helped to build it is in the firm understanding that we only built this so that one day it could burn. And most of us are willing to shoot our own citadels, you know, just for the sake of like, well, if you don't believe us, here's what we're going to do. So, Burr, I think depending on what we decide to do, what our leadership decides to do, it is really going to play the biggest part in this war because... Of all the organizations in New Eden, yes, we teamed up with No at one point in time, but we were never afraid of fighting No. You know what I mean? And it was a respect that existed between the pilots. We knew that we could join together, and we did during the Void War, but we'd also turn around and we'd fight each other. And we always said, like, if, you know, if it came down to it, I mean, you guys are neutral to us and so on and so forth, you know, we'll, we'll gladly fight you and we're going to have a good fight on the grid. And we have fought each other before. Outnumbered, yeah, not like, outnumbered, like it's great. Are only it's great. Neutrals are only targets you haven't yet locked. Essentially. Exactly. Yeah, essentially. So, them doing what they are doing, I uh, I hope that one day we can uh, we can get Tahini on the show. Uh, he has been on the show plenty of times. Uh, so that he can just talk a little bit about, you know, the, the you know, like uh, the decision that they made and, and why they made it. Uh, and I would love to have a member of SHH on the show so that they could explain, hey, you know, no, we're in this war. We're in it. You know, we're still in this war to win. And they are fleeting up and they are doing some great things. And even though they were getting face rolled, they still fleeted up. And I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's respect. I got I to gotta give them and respect, it, you know. <laughs> they have my utmost respect indeed. One hundred. And I want to. I want to dogpile. I'm on just, what you're just saying there, Mackenzie. Uh, we want to get people on this show to tell their stories. And it doesn't have to be leadership. Like I'm not fear leadership. I don't know if some of you may know that I'm part of the Fear Alliance. I just happen to go and tell my story. People like hearing stories. Hey, I got 17 up up dudes on Reddit. I feel like a good thing because people are enjoying this. I mean, that was out of 139 people that looked at the picture. So, hey, more than 10%. But I'm telling you, you don't have to come on a show just because you're leadership. Tell what you think. Tell your story. Come on and talk about the sound of us. Uh, that's what are very we doing? true. What are you doing? And it's, it's really important. And the reason why I try to respect the hierarchy of SHH is because uh, typically when it comes to, to, uh, to the media, they prefer... If their leadership figures um, are the ones to, uh, to 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 do the speaking, so I mean anyone True, now from I SHH say. is is welcome on the show, and I would I would gladly I would love to have them. But I also understand you know the hierarchy of what they have built, and uh, and so <clears throat> very important to uh, to make you know to just make it clear that no we're we're not we're not encouraging you guys to come on the air and say and, you know and, and and say things that are going to make uh, your uh, your leadership throw knives at you however you are free to come on to the show and uh, just like talk a little bit about uh, how this war has been um, you know has been fought and uh, you know how, how you feel like with the battles that we've been having and next week next week is going to be it's going to be the um, it's going to be a, a telltale type of week because mm -hmm. this war has not gone on for a full week yet it kicked off on last Thursday um, it, it's just it, kicking off we're just waking up it officially started up in, uh, it started up on, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Friday. Friday was the first official day where the, the fleet started to be deployed and the capitals were, are in, in, you know, in the, um, and the, 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 um, and people were out there setting timers and getting them and such. This war is not much more than four days old as of this hour. And yet so much has happened and it, yeah. it really was just extremely it was crazy uh what um like how um how you know it's like one day this is what's going on and the next day this is what's going on so i will I, I came on today i'm busy um i'm busy um 
you know, uh, doing doing some of my schoolwork and catching up on things, real life things. And I'm like, well, I guess tomorrow I'm just going to know life the war, right? And uh, and today at 10 a.m. and this is what Colt said, and it's his quote from the announcement board, the craft company. I'm sure that our enemies already have it anyway, so it's fine. He said, for a whole year, I was asked to start a war against SHH. For two years, all wars were won when no came. And now that your wish has finally come true and you've got the war you dreamed of, take the trouble to win it. I wish the Crab Army the best of luck and victory in this war. No one's leaving this war and the game. We are finally disbanding. We, will, we find no honor in fighting three to four versus one. Uh, we did not anticipate this, co this coalition growing so big or strong. Reminder, there will be no safe wars in this game. There will be no safe null sector in this game. You will see us again, Deuce's Cult. Now, I understand what Cult is saying, and I completely respect what no, you know, no stance on that. They don't find honor in fighting three versus one. However, I, I'm, I guess I kind of fail to understand, you know, the other side of the coin. SHH has no trouble at all fighting you know, fighting w um, with overwhelming force. And um, this never was a war about, if you ask anyone, it's not really a war about, uh, about a fair fight. When we fought Void, it was all about just getting good content from Void. But with SHH, it was about breaking their organization into smaller pieces because they're too large. They're too large for any one alliance in this game to take on by themselves. And... At the end of the day, everyone, TSC and Burr and Boop and everyone else is going to go neutral to one another again. You know, no matter how this whole thing turns out, everyone's going to go neutral to one another again anyway. And even though I don't count SHH out and uh, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm fighting this war, but I'm, I'm more or less interested in seeing the end of it than writing the end of it right now. I don't really fathom New Eden being in a good spot if they are allowed to survive this. <laughs> because if I know SHH, and I think I know him pretty well at this point, see, Burr doesn't really care. Burr are pirates anyway. And so they can burn all our sob and we won't give a shit. But right. they w if <laughs> what they would do is they will go around and they will knock on the door of every organization that took part in this war and they will systematically pick them apart. <laughs> and we know it's oh, going to happen because they've done it. <laughs> and, oh my and God, so. Laundry, yeah. This makes me, this <laughs> makes me very glad that my alliance, the Fallen Angels Army, is not actually participating in this war. We're just sitting back eating popcorn, watching the fires that are visible from yes. the next galaxy over. Yeah, so, I heard you say I'm, that. I heard you say that while we were talking off air earlier, and and I, I think your viewpoint on what you were saying about a difference in what I expect to what you expect this war is going to bring. I'm expecting we're going to smash, smash, smash. Everybody's going to smash, smash, smash. Be lots of smash, smash, smash. And I'm predicting it's going to turn into inter-regional conf sorry intra-regional conflicts we're after this war we're all just going to be fighting inside our regions no more jumping 80 fleets 80 jumps with heavy battleship fleets we're going to have content on our doorsteps but your comments earlier i put words in your mouth your comments earlier about how this war might change in a different way i'd like to hear your thoughts on that on the air here because that was really eye-opening for me talking about how it's not necessarily going to go that way because SHH is going to sit on their butts. No, they're their not. Hands under their rears while we just, while we, I keep saying we as if I'm talking for the crew, but while the group that's fighting SHH just rolls up into the north and just knocks on, Absolutely rings the doorbell not. on everything. They station. have not, they it's have not, not they have not sat on their hands one day. They have fleeted up every time in holy hell. That is amazing. They, holy they hell. knew that they're they, taking this war seriously. They are even taking it seriously. I didn't expect anything less. They are absolutely yeah. doing a great job, and I commend them for that. Where did they tomorrow, go today? Um, I, well, I'm not really sure, but I'll I'll be finding uh, out. Unfortunately, well, we didn't have Latara on the uh, show today. Uh, Nick? I know. I wish he was here. Nick, Alondra. You know where you know where I think they, I, today I think because they've been asleep, out and about. So. They've been fighting pretty well, I think. 
I mean, yeah. and, they, and they've been on the move. They've been all over the galaxy. They're not just hanging out and fade, hanging out and teen. No, no, no. They're not sitting back and going, "Oh, y'all gonna come play on our doorstep?" Sure, we'll just wait for you. Because that's not how SHH plays. Right. This They're is why they've been you. so successful over the years. They don't wait for somebody to come play to them. They bring the party. They bring the pot. They bring the booze. They bring the music. They bring and everything. They go where your uh, party technically is. Technically, they don't. They don't bring the music. I do that, but uh, they bring everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Um, as far as the war is concerned, SHH is. Um, SHH. Well, they are. <sighs> it's too soon to call it. It's been three days. Yes, no was spearheading the war. Yes, no has decided that they are going to. Um, that they're not going to be in this war. But I think that a different story uh, is that. Even though No has stepped out of the war, they didn't just step out of the war. They actually completely disbanded their alliance, which we will get to in just a moment. From Fountain to Solitude to Starship Me, talk on New Eden FM. Yeah, it's a good thing that I muted that while you were doing that. <laughs> anyways, oh, uh, any, anyways, I should have told you. No, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, real talk, though, and this is Eve talk because Eve talk is such an it's uh, it's a part where we, we talk about community, right? And the reality yeah. is that I don't think anyone expected no to hit the 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 self destruct button, and they did that. Like I actually is this live uh, or we just chit chat. No, no, no. We are we are absolutely on the air right now. Oh, um, oh, heck yeah. When, when on earth do we oh, ever have dead exactly. space going? I mean, uh, yeah. like, really? We don't have dead air? Jeez. No, we, we hold the yeah. show. We, we, have, we have a very... I thought you'd put some music on, because I heard you say that. and oh. say, say community. This is for real. I don't know if anybody ever wonders what we talk about while the music's going, while we're sitting here talking about. It's just talking about us. It's the same stuff. I mean, definitely feel free to jump into the studio with us. You can hear it. It's just We just keep going. We keep going, but we want to play you quality music. Right. Because well, it's a music show. Well, the the I think the big story here is that uh, is that an organization, and No has existed at least for what two years. Uh, they've been around oh, for gosh. as long as I can remember. They were essentially the first arch enemy of Pantheon, uh, and I mean we you know we had a lot of um, we did have a a good number of enemies. Um, I want to say No started before MC. Mm. Started to decline. Am I right? I think so. It was something like that. No, no, no. Uh, is was formed by corporations that uh, broke off from MC. Well, so, I thought that they were formed yeah. of corporations that actually broke off from Silent. That's where Tahini was before forming. Well, well, they, they, they. Uh, no, they, they went to Silent after they broke off from MC. They, they had a journey before <coughs> okay. they, they founded No. But, but MC existed long before No was even a thought. So. And this is I why see. we're asking, hey, if you're listening and you're No, come, come. I, I think... It's, I think right now it, it's it's a little bit soon for uh, for for them to make an official statement because most of them don't know anything. Um, Latara had an opportunity to go around and talk to many of their like the leaders, and the, uh, some of the CEOs were caught as they were caught as off guard as the rest of the universe. Like they had no idea well, what was going on. Yeah, and I, I did talk to uh, Dragon Viper over there, and she said that. Uh, Hugh is going to issue a statement. They've just got things going on. So okay, um, probably within the next day or two, or, or maybe three. Once things calm down and everything like that, I'm sure we'll we'll hear more from them. And of course, we'll try and get somebody on the show next week. Of course, I mean, uh, even if it means doing another one of these uh, late nighters, right? <laughs> but um, but I, I thought that that was the most uh, compelling part. Like they didn't just leave the war they literally said he said that no was leaving the game and uh, he did he, he actually hit the disband button and and i i saw it i was like when at first when i saw the post come um come up i, I thought it was a joke and then i was like wait this actually happened yeah this thing actually happened like yeah, he, hit, yeah. he hit the the self-destruct button yeah oh uh well, well, no, no transferred. Uh, Tini transferred the executorship back to Cult and uh, well, Sky, Black Sky. Yes, of course. Um, so, and then he's the one who actually hit the button. And uh, I wonder. So that's, 
Oh, they, I do uh, wonder he why. He was the founder of No, so I guess they, they felt it was appropriate that he be the one to, to pull the plug. Yep, and pull the plug he did. In fact... Indeed. If you give me a moment here, I can post this for you in the sound of us. One second. Off to, to the guys in No, and once you have all your things taken care of and you know what, what awaits you on the horizon, we want to hear from you on the show. In the meantime, uh, I'll check in with some of the people from Silent and see if I can get one of them to come on to the show and, uh, and just talk to us a little bit about, uh, about the war from their perspective. Especially after next week, you know what I mean? They may successfully defend these citadels. They may successfully defend them. I'm expecting for them to drop caps on us tomorrow night, to be honest. But, but we'll see. We'll see how it all happens. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this war goes. But what I can tell you is that if it was going to be a carpet bomb with no, this is definitely going to be in a long, uh, 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 you know, a prolonged attrition now that no is gone and, and Burr is basically, you know, the, 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 the tip of the spear. Uh, as far as our um, as our navy is concerned, yeah, yeah. The thing is, is that uh, what I'm wondering, what I'm sitting here wondering about this war, is now that No is out, now 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 that there is a a gap in the coalition of of experienced PvP pilots, because let's face it, No made up a nice chunk of those people willing to spend six to eight hours in a fleet. Are both sides going to try and look at the neutral organizations and try and recruit for their side? I wonder that. I don't know. I mean, but that's the glory of war, right? Anything can happen. And um, mm -hmm. one of the hardest things from my personal experience, um, you know, doing command work and, and, you know, like military tactics type games and things like that, the hardest thing to do... In a war, if you are on the losing side of things, is to convince an organization to involve their self or themselves with your cause. Um, when every when you're winning and when your odds look good, people are ready to, to jump in. In fact, right now, if you check out the SHH server, there's tons of memes about like Void jumping into the war once they looked at the odds. <laughs> You know, I, uh, I, I I personally got a few good laughs off of some of those memes that they posted. But when you are not winning a war, it's more difficult to get people to join in your favor. Genesis Federation made a habit of basically being the unsung heroes of the wars um, when they saw EX, or ex-Happy Bees, getting thrashed. What did they do? They got involved in the war. When they saw uh, TSC getting thrashed, what did they do? They joined the war. They always came to Pantheon's aid uh, for the most part, and Pantheon went to their aid for the most part. Um, that was a very healthy relationship. That, that part yeah. was a pretty healthy relationship. It was, um, but at the same time, I kind of see where, where people uh, uh, were, uh, were somewhat right about the, uh, the blue donut concept because that was a very yeah. fat amount of blue in one spot. Maybe not healthy for the game, but healthy for each other. Healthy for each other in accomplishing war goals. I will say, though, I believe, looking back in retrospective, yeah. because it's hard with my rose-colored glasses. Oh, I hope rose is around. Um, during that time when Pantheon and GenFed were at each other's backs. At each other's backs? Is that the right word for it? Having each other's backs each other. back then. Yeah. Uh, Pantheon and GenFed, I don't think, taught our members collectively to view this game as scary. Because I remember there was a time where I was telling my guys in Pantheon, you know, over in Esoteria, there are fleets of a thousand. Fleets of a thousand. Thousand man fleets. Oh, and they were all like, you're full of shit, Rosalind. Am I wrong? You were definitely uh, not wrong. I mean, I was in the fleet there. I was in the fleet there with 1,200 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was there I when. We, oh my gosh, I was there when um, we formed up to fight Content Coalition. They had made a few hull timers in our space, and um, dude, we we literally um, we put ourselves in tie dye. That's how many people we had on that gate. I mean, it was the one time in the history of No Please Stop's illustrious career that I ever witnessed No look at a war or look at a battle, 
see the numbers, and then turn around and go in the other direction. That was the only time I ever saw them do that. But for that, we had amassed like 1,200 pilots between Pantheon and GenFed. That was a lot of people. And I feel like that was kind of a golden age in this game because it wasn't just about the fact that we had that many people, you know, that Pantheon and GenFed had that many people. It was the fact that that many people were, were, were in just two organizations. Um, Pantheon yeah. already had somewhere around 700 people that were waiting in system, and that didn't include, like, scouts. And then GenFed came and further reinforced us with an additional, like, 500 and before we knew it, we were like, we were tie-dyed on our own gate. And not a single shot had been fired. But these days, it's just not really, it's just not really, you know, it, it's not really, um, it, it's just not what it is. You know what I mean? It's just not what's going on. Um, Between December 20th and December 24th, we're going to see 2,000 players in a null sec system. Possibly. Top 2,000. I'm not... I'm not talking about bots or alts or real pilots or any of that. I'm going to say just raw numbers. I am, uh, dude. This I'm, game I'm is saying that that could, that could happen this week, though, because SHH, <coughs> SHH has a lot of timers right now, and I believe thirty-seven, thirty-seven timers, thirty-seven, 37 timers. Seven fire timers. Except for fire dogs got a good point. System system cap is an actual real thing. Like you might get stopped. It's fifteen hundred, right? I know. It's, I'm gonna, it's I'm, gonna I'm gonna revise my bet for anybody taking me up on it. I'm gonna put a million. I'm gonna put a million bucks, not a million SHH bucks, because I don't know if you saw the numbers I just ran. Uh, sorry, a million no bucks. No, no, destroying a million bucks. I ran the numbers. That's their seventy trillion. I'm gonna put a million iski bucks. Uh, saying we're gonna have two thousand either in system or trying to get in system at some point <laughs> before Christmas Day. Yep, and I'm actually just looking at the sound of us really quick, uh, and you can't help but laugh at Santiago. Uh, he literally uh, made a statement on the um, on the crap uh, army Discord. Uh, Santiago <laughs> yes. destroys twelve hours and knowing it's dead. That's <laughs> <laughs> the entire reason Santiago destroyed no. <laughs> Santiago <laughs> destroyed no. Is that Santi hanging in the yeah, lounge right yeah, now? Yeah, of course. Uh, big shout out to um, to Santiago. Uh, but that's funny, though. Uh, he joins. I didn't even know that he had joined Pew for the war. But uh, yeah, he joins Pew, and now Pew is dead. <laughs> oh or, no, Pew isn't Santee, dead. I'm, no, is I'm, dead. I'm, no, is dead. Pew is very much alive. And Santi, if you do feel like dropping down in, I'm giving you studio access right now if you want to yep. come yik yak with us. Oh, Damon Zell's here with us. Damon. History class is in session. Apparently. You want to give us a lesson? Apparently. Uh, which lesson are you speaking of? Uh, <laughs> right yes, we're, now. we're talking about the nation. history of no, I guess, you know, but um, in reflection yeah. to, uh, to the... A million bucks. A million bucks. <laughs> I ran those numbers. I'm not sure they're right, but a million bucks sounds about right for 70 <laughs> trillion. Considering 100 billion is a college education, 70? 70 times that? Sorry, 700 times that. Mm. Good golly. Yep. Good golly. No has taken from us collectively, and I'm not even saying this is like a bad thing, has taken from us, has taken our hard-earned iskies, a million dollars worth of iskies. I mean, that's years. good. God damn. That's good. God and damn. you know what the that crazy part good. about it is? That's not even the money that they extorted when they sold Citadels back to people oh. and stuff. <laughs> that's, not, that's not even counting that or how much they've oh charged God. for protection or, or blah, blah, blah. Right? That's just kills. Dude, hey, look, it's awesome. I mean, but that's the pirate way, right? And uh, it, I think pirate that way. it's going to be very interesting. We're definitely leaving a legacy to be, uh, to be filled. I, that is a high bar. Who's who's gonna do this? Is is Burr up for a million bucks? I mean, I wanna I wanna say yes. I wanna say yes because Burr they're not the successor to know because they've been no. around. What have you been around a, a, a year now since it's been since the Gen Fed collapse, right? Um it's been so a little bit less time than that. Since, less time than since that. the apple of Mackenzie's eye was confirmed to be the Burr. Um, how, it's how, been, um, we've actually been in birth for roughly about seven months, I think. 
give or take seven months. So let's um, say let's say two thirds <laughs> the time that Noah's been around. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, one third. One third, one third of the time. You want to math wrong? Yeah. Me. I mean, how, I mean, how far along the million bucks do you think? I mean, what I can Burr say about um, what I can say about Burr is that Burr put in a hellacious amount of work to um, to be able to to grow themselves, to be able to compete with uh, with Silent and No. Um, because when we came into this uh, as mercenaries and as pirates, obviously people are only pliable because you have guns. People don't hire you um, because they like you. They hire you because you can get the job done. And so Burr had to work um, incessantly in order to be able to keep up with demands of capital ship pr uh, production and things like that. Um, we had, uh, we, you know, we had a point in the right direction from people like Dragon Viper and Run, but at the end of the day, we had to put in the work ourselves, and it was a lot of work to be able to just, like, kind of trust, for people to trust us enough to give us the work, to give us the contracts. Um, so, Burr has, Burr has a younger age on it and everything, but I think that with no dissolving the way that they did, it just pretty much opens the market, right? I mean, no matter how this war goes, when you think about it, Burr is in a good situation because when this war is over, whether we lose the war, which, I, you know, we're not going to lose this war because we're going to keep fighting it, or whether we win the war, it, you're looking at a, a market where now we are going to be taking contracts, as we always did, um, and we're just going to continue to do what we do as PvP pilots. That's all it really is. Uh, this might be a holy war situation and everything, and we're committed to doing it and everything. But at the end of the day, we are PvP pilots. That's all it, it, it really is. And so it never really was about trying to catch up to no or be a replacement yeah. no. It was always about... It was always about us simply wanting to be known for who we are, and that's it. We respect no, we've teamed with no, we fought no, but at the end of the day, no one's going to replace no because no did something special in this game, and they, they, they created a legacy for themselves. Anything that Burr creates yeah. is going to be a legacy for Burr, not a legacy of what no was, but a legacy of what Burr is. Push. Or um with the with the group yeah and uh, and and then we'll um, we'll we'll plan from there because I know that it's our been US an amazing crew does want special episode some of these um and I know that the EU crew also likes to have some of theirs uh, I know that this time tends to be better for silent but this uh, but the EU time tends to be better for like no leadership so I guess it'll depend mm -hmm. on the guests that we have for next week but. For those of you guys that tuned in for the entire broadcast, I want to wish you guys an awesome amount of thanks. Uh, and we don't want to keep you all night. Go out there, join some fleets, or do what I'm doing on tomorrow. I'm going to wake up, I'm going to um, eat food, and then I'm probably going to just know life the, uh, the war for, for a day, maybe two, uh, before real life catches up to me and I realize that I have other things to do. But... And a shout out to Zellian. I just uh, I just saw that yes he is there in um, in the studio, and uh, I I wouldn't I don't know about whaling, but I can I can uh, I can think about a few other uh, a few other things. Either way, uh, signing off with this.